Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a global artist ambassador for Phoenix 360, and I am blessed to be joined today by the musical artist, Maxine Rays. Hey, Maxine, how you doing? Hi, Johnny. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It is great to see you, Maxine. Thanks for being with me. And listen, Maxine, I would love to hear about how you became a musical artist and share some of that journey and some of your experiences. But first, I'd like to share with our audience some of your music. So if it's cool with you, how about we tune into your track, If You Want Good? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> cool. All right, everyone. Let's tune in now to Maxine Ray's with If You Want Good. If you want good, you know that I feel wrong. If you want good, you know that I feel wrong. Let me talk to you. Good things come to those who work. Can't afford to play it safe. Gotta sacrifice on the finish line. Don't stop, can't stop, won't stop. Courage and grace on my mind. Yeah. Don't ever look back. ta ta run the track. Oh, yeah. Scene, blessed love, beautiful to share your music with everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you, know, you. You're welcome. So tell me, Maxine, you know, where are you from and how do you first get involved in becoming a musical artist? I'm originally from Jamaica. I came here to the United States as a teenager and um, I've been involved in music as far as back in the home. Um, ever since I was living in Jamaica, my entire family sings. Uh, we love to harmonize and music has always been a central point where we come together, we cook our foods and we, we just eat and, you know, just gather together and music has always been in the heart of my family. So it's a good reason why I continue to, to sing. And then now I want to hear my music in people's households because my father this has been his living, his way of life ever since I've known him. He's a reggae musician out of Miami and I've seen him on stage and I just, you know, saw the, the how electrifying he is and how drawn um, people are to him because of his craft. And I had it naturally. So I've been encouraged, you know, by everyone to go ahead and pursue it. And that's what I'm doing now. Oh, Maxine, that is beautiful. It's great to have that kind of in your DNA, the, yeah. you know, the kind of joy and, and soulful feeling of wanting to perform and to sing. And, and the fact that that happened for you at a tender age among your siblings and friends growing up, and then to have the inspiration of your father in terms of his reggae performing and, and the spark that's in him. I'm sure you looked up to him uh, in, in the ways that he 
performs, but you have now emerged as, you know, such a stylist, you know, and soulful singer yourself. You know, can you tell me, you know, in addition to your father, you know, were there other artists that maybe inspired you to help influence the way you now perform? Absolutely. I, I grew up listening to all types of music. Uh, R&B has been one of the the genres that has been near and dear to my heart, besides reggae, because reggae is in me, reggae is me, <laughs> you know, as a Jamaican. Um, but I loved listening to Aretha Franklin, Patti LaBelle, Whitney Houston, um, of course, Marcia Griffiths and Bob Marley. Um, there are so many Jamaican artists that I've also um, been influenced by, um, you know, Toots and the Matals, uh, Jimmy Cliff. There, there's so many amazing uh, singers and, and, and performers that have, um, have that have in influenced me. And so now it's it's my turn to carry on that torch. Um, and you may see me wearing this, this shirt. It says uh -huh. my voice makes a difference. Uh, music in me, but I don't want to just be a singer. Um, singing on stage or singing anything. I want to be impactful to people who are listening because I know how positive, uplifting music makes me feel. And so I want people to feel that way. Maxine, that's really beautiful. It's very generous of you to consider that as well. And I think that the roots of reggae is really a healing kind of music. Yes, you know, it's absolutely. It's so inspiring and uplifting. And, you know, it seems to be infused by kind of, you know, the spirit of one love and the almighty um mm -hmm. the energy that comes from all things living so yes. i'm glad that you've embraced that and have really integrated into you know your style um but r b also has such a romantic vibe and you mentioned so those powerful artists and certainly you can feel the wave of that flowing through your sound <laughs> thank you oh, you're welcome so and then just you mentioning that um you know the, the whole uh, spiritual a vibe r&b artists that i mentioned they all have a, a gospel or a christian background yeah. uh, and so connecting with the people connecting with a higher power to to shift to shine that light on people and make them feel good is i feel it's a responsibility as an artist and so that's why you're gonna listen if you listen to my, my the lyrics of my songs you're gonna it's gonna make you feel good somehow just like good reggae music make you feel you know <laughs> no i think that's beautiful max it was a great um kind of uh framework for which to create content that is spiritually uplifting and empowering yeah. and i think there's so much um suffering um and people who are in a downtrodden kind of uh place that you know they need some support so i'm glad that your music can not only entertain but also heal and to empower others you know also from the power of your female voice you know how that might inspire young female performers as well you know i think that you have a great platform for that and you're a Thank great you. example for it Thank so you. in fact so much so that the power of that voice has also been uh, introduced and invited to perform at some very large venues and actually sporting events. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. I've always watched, say, the Super Bowl or any sports event where the, the national anthem is always played at the front. Um, and, you know, it, the opening ceremony, it, people, they sit there, they look at, at you as a singer and you have to deliver the national anthem. And it's at first used to be one of the most one of the most difficult songs to perform. <laughs> Mainly, I don't want to forget the words. Right. Um, I don't want to crack on the high notes, you know. Uh, but that has helped me to become a more confident singer, a more confident performer. Because growing up, I was scared to sing in front of people. <laughs> I would sing in the back of the class or with others. You would never see me singing by myself. So taking on the challenge to sing the national anthem has been very empowering for me and it's built my confidence to where I am now because singing without music, singing all those high notes in front of millions of people, it's a, it's a huge challenge. And, you know, I embraced it. And, and then now I'm singing for our, um, teams like the Miami Marlins. Uh, I've done it for President Bush. I've actually been overseas where the US Embassy asked me to sing for the Royal Family of Qatar 
on behalf of the U.S. Embassy. So I've done the national anthem there as well. Uh, recently, I did it for the Tampa Bay Rays because that's where I am now. So everywhere I've been um, stationed with the military, did I share that I was in the military? No, you did not. That's <laughs> yeah. You. So yeah. all of my adult life, pretty much, I've served in the in the U.S. Um, Army and Air Force, uh, and we can get into that if you if you want to. But you know, anytime there was always a retirement ceremony, promotion ceremony, or their dignitaries, uh, like the secretary of the of the Air Force that came and I was the one selected to do the national anthem. So just different platforms, um, different events, different venues that I've been able to do that. And now I'm where I am um, and that has helped me. Maxine, I got to tell you, thank you for your service. And that's incredible that also, you know what I mean? That you've also served in the military, but, mm -hmm. uh, but back to the actually performing in front of those venues with millions of people watching. And you're right. That is a very difficult song to sing. It's easy to screw up the lyrics and to mix stanzas. And um, so it, it's true. You, you, you've had to become you know, so proficient at ensuring that you deliver on point, you know, in that particular song in front of those incredible masses of people. Did, I mean, when you, right before you begin, is it, is it so frightening or, or it's not, is it not so tough anymore? I mean, to me, it would just be like, yikes. <laughs> in the past. Yes. Um, I used to ask myself, why did I volunteer for this again? <laughs> because <laughs> the anxiety was there. My heart was always racing. I was sweating. But now I, I've done it so many times. I've done it over a hundred times. So I just go on onto the field or on, onto the stage. I say my prayer before I go and I'm calm as ever because all eyes are on me and I can't mess this up. So you just have to embrace it. You just be calm. And as long as I start on the right note, because when you're doing acapella, you have to like keep you know make sure that you have because if you start too high, right. you're gonna mess it up when it gets up there. And if you start too low, it's not gonna be as impactful. So um, now, as long as I know my notes, my key, the key that I'm supposed to start on, I'm I'm usually good. But I don't, I don't. It's not an ego thing because I'll never, um, I'll I'll never be overly confident with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. But you want those bombs to burst in the air in the right note. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so Maxine, tell me now, what is your current focus? What are you working on now? Uh, right now, I am working on on my Christmas uh, EP, but I do have some songs that's going to be released between now and um, November. So I'm working on music videos for them. I my first music video will be for If You Want Good, and I'm just waiting on that to come out um, to be finished uh, editing. And just, you know, doing things in between to be visible and trying to get onto podcasts and, and shows like yours, radio shows like yours, uh -huh. and just local television, anything that I, I, I can do to get my brand out there so people can hear my music that's pretty much it. And of course, I'm 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 still being a mom and a wife at, at home. So it's uh -huh. a it's a balance I gotta, you know, have going. So sure, exactly. You know, <laughs> your artistic life, but also your personal life and and juggling those responsibilities. I can appreciate that that, you know, that's how dynamic an individual you are in order to, you know, cultivate and give the proper energy to all those different roles that you have. So let me ask this question then. If fans were going to discover you or connect with you, how could they do that in the digital or social realms? Where are you? I'm on, I'm on most social platforms. So um, Maxine Reyes Live is my Instagram. And if folks are on TikTok, that's what where my account is. Facebook, the same. So Maxine Reyes Live. And very important because you, you, they're going to need to see my music videos that's coming out. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Maxine Reyes TV. Definitely. That sounds yeah. Oh, and, and, sorry. TV. What else? Spotify, what else? iTunes. Spotify, iTunes. If you can go on there, um, subscribe to my radio, uh, Spotify especially, and it's going to be Maxine Reyes. Or if you click on the song, you'll see the account and then follow me on there as well. Yeah. That's great. Well, listen, Maxine, I'm going to post your links below our interview today. And then okay. we're also going to be looking forward to you being on the Phoenix 360 app coming up so that yes. fans can connect directly with you there as well. And mm -hmm. as well as, you know, some of the works that you've got coming out, we're going to be following your progress. So I really appreciate connecting with you today, Maxine. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thanks, everyone, for listening. <laughs>
<laughs> Bless you. Okay, everyone, tune in to Maxine Rays and watch her rising on the Phoenix 360 app and blessings and respect, Maxine. Ooh, see.